Okay then, so today we're going to talk about continuity in FretJet vSpaces. So FretJet vSpaces, as I've recently discovered, are a fantastic way of abstractly representing spaces. In some sense, they're more general than topological spaces, but I also believe in some sense they're more intuitive. So the idea of a FretJet vSpace is that we have some set of elements. We can think of these as sort of the points in our space. And each element is associated with a collection of neighborhoods, which we know here as zeta xi, being the collection of neighborhoods associated with uh, point x. Uh, and the i just denotes the space, because we could have different Frechet V spaces are on the same set I, which have different neighborhood structures. So we might want an index to indicate the differences. Anyway, so basically zeta xi denotes the collection of neighborhoods of a point at x belonging to our set of all points ai. Um, and a particular element of this collection, let's say n, n is an element of this collection zeta xi. Uh, this element, uh, <coughs> this collection of neighborhoods. So basically what we're saying here is n is a neighborhood of x. What does that mean? That just means that n is a subset of ai. So all we're saying here basically is that every point in a is associated with a collection of things which we call neighborhoods, and those neighborhoods are just subsets of our set ai. That's pretty much all there is to it. So you can draw some very simple diagrams. I've got some diagrams on my wall here of some Frechette V spaces on two points. So here, um, A would just be the set one and two. And um, I'm using a solid lines to denote the neighbourhoods of point number one and dotted lines to denote the neighbourhoods of point number two. And this is just to, just to show you, but these are a load of the different Frechette uh, v spaces on two points and I've drawn how they relate to each other in some sense. Anyway, um, today we want to talk about continuity because it's interesting to think about how continuity can be defined on Frechette v spaces because for one thing this definition of continuity sort of um, trickles down into topological space territory because Frechette v spaces are a generalization <clears throat> excuse me, Frechette V spaces are a generalization of topological spaces. So in a way, we're looking at the most fundamental definition of um, continuity that's used, well, I don't know if it's the most, but it's a very general one. Um, and for that reason, it's interesting. And it's also interesting uh, because there's a few different ways to look at it. And we can look at it purely in terms of these subsets and so forth. And um, also, it, it leads on to the very interesting topic of homeomorphisms, because in a sense, topology, and in addition to the study of Frechette v-spaces, can be regarded as the study of um, properties which are invariant under homeomorphisms. So a homeomorphism, just to uh, cut the chase, is, is a... Um, one-to-one -one correspondence between the sets of elements of two spaces, which is continuous and its inverse is continuous. Um, and so in some sense, topologists regard homeomorphic structures as the same. So it's very important to understand what homeomorphisms are. Of course, to do that, one needs to understand what continuity is. Okay then, so here comes the definition of continuity. So let's suppose that we've got uh, K and K1, and those are the sets um, that have these different V spaces on. Okay, so there'll be a space where K is the set of points, and there'll be a space where K1 is the set of points. And the different spaces, maybe, that have different neighborhood structures, maybe. Um, so there we are. We have these two different Frechette V spaces, K1 and K2. Um, and we also have this extra restriction here for this definition. We also assume that every element is a member of each of its neighborhoods. 
Um, now, I mean, that's what I did on these pictures over here. If you have a look, you can see, for example, the solid um, loops, they always contain point 0.1 because they're neighborhoods of point 0.1. So it is natural to assume that, but you don't have to assume that in the general Frejet vSpace thing. But for this definition of continuity, we do make this. And uh, in this book uh, that I'm reading from, uh, Sapinski um, says that, that apparently you can make this assumption without loss of generality. I'm not quite sure what he means by that. Um, but anyway, so we're going to define what it is to have a subset. Maybe this is a good picture. No, this is a good picture. To have some subset E of one Frechet V space K. Um, what it means for there to be a continuous mapping from this set into some other, or it could be the same, but we'll give it a different name and it could have different structure, into some other Frejet V space K1. What does this mean? What does it mean for such a mapping to be continuous? What is the definition of a continuous mapping? Well, firstly, of course, it's a mapping F and it's going to be mapping points. It's going to be mapping points from E into points in K1. So every element X in E is going to get associated with an element F of X in K1. And of course, um, E is going to be a subset of K and there's going to be a certain subset of K1. Uh, here I've drawn it as F of E, which is the place where all of the points from E get mapped to. So we know that all of these points from E are going to get mapped to here. Now, what's the definition that we're looking at? We're going to look at the definition of continuity of this mapping F in set E at a, set, at a particular point P belonging to this set E. Okay, So we have this set E. It has a specific point in it, P0. And we're asking the question, what does it mean for a mapping from this set E to K1 or into K1? What does it mean for such a mapping to be continuous at this point P0? Okay, so here comes the definition. The definition is that for every neighborhood V of the image F of P0 in K1, in this other space, for every neighborhood V of this point, this image point, there should exist a neighborhood U of point P0, which is such that the image of that neighborhood U intersecting with E is contained within V. So it gets sent inside it somehow. Okay, so this is the definition. Now, I'm going to go through it again algebraically in a moment because it'll be a lot clearer but I think it's easier if I start with an example. I think this is a better example. So if you look at the special case you see this diagram you see in this case I mean the whole way this definition works is that E is supposed to be a subset of K. So we can look at the special case where E is equal to K and that's a bit easier to understand in my opinion. So this diagram, I think, gets across the notion of continuity a bit uh, a bit more clearly for the special case where E is equal to K. So what's it mean? Well, what have we got in this picture? Here we've got the space K and this point P0. And we're interested in the definition of when F is continuous at this point P0. And so our condition, so you see that at, uh, P0 is getting mapped to F of P0, K is getting mapped to K1, and so forth. So our condition is that for every neighborhood V of F of P0, so here is such a neighborhood, so for each of these neighborhoods V that we could choose from a collection of neighborhoods that F of P0 has, there must exist a neighborhood U of our original point, P0, which is such that the image 
of that neighborhood, that image, we can call that f of u, it's drawn here, that must be contained within v. That is our criteria for continuity at this particular point. All right, so let's go through this one more time just to make sure we've got it. Definition of continuity in set E at point P0 of E. It's continuous when for every neighborhood V of F of P0, there exists a neighborhood U um, of P0 such that every point that's in the intersection of U and E gets mapped to a point which is in V. That's our definition of continuity at a point P0. Now, if our function is continuous at every single point P0 in the set E, we say that the function is continuous on E. And that's interesting because when we have that continuity over a whole region. Okay. Fine, thank you. Thank you. Alex, where's mummy? I don't know. It's Megan. Okay, so after that digression, um, so why is this continuity idea so cool? Well, I think one reason it's so cool is that there's an alternative expression for it. So let's say we have that f is continuous on this set E for every point P0 on E. So we'd say just f is continuous on E, okay? This is all according to the definition I was just talking about. Turns out that there's a, theor a theorem... It's a theorem 22 in Sapinski's general topology book. And um, what it says is that this is equivalent to saying that for every subset of E and for every point of E, we have the property that P is a limit point of X um, implies that F of P is going to be a limit point of F of X. So in this sense, continuity can be considered to be preserving limit points in some sense. Which is interesting because there's another definition of continuity called limit continuity, which has to do with infinite sequences, which I'm not going to go into right now. But the way they basically set it up is they get at the limit point concept in a bit of a different way to do with infinite sequences and things getting very close to one another and getting caught in neighbourhoods and whatnot. Um, and then they basically wind up giving a very similar definition of what continuity is in a set to this one. It's just that they talk about limit points differently. We get our definition of limit point, I think, in a very nice, elegant way. We define the limit point P to be a limit point of E if every neighbourhood of P has a point in common with E other than P itself, which is a very nice sort of set theoretic definition. Okay, so what can we say about continuous mappings? Well, quite a lot. Um, one thing is that <clears throat> you can compose them. So even if, let's say, you've got a mapping that's just continuous at a particular point, um, if you apply that mapping, you send that point to maybe some other space by applying some continuous mapping F, if you then apply another continuous mapping G, then the composition of those two corresponds to a mapping H, which is also continuous. Okay, so composing continuous maps gives you continuous maps. Um, that's one thing. Another very important and nice thing is, of course, this definition of homeomorphism. To put it bluntly, if you have a, a subset E of... A, Frenchette v space k and a subset a t of a Frenchette um, a Frenchette v space and it should say k1 and I'm not sure what I was writing there k1 okay then um, the criteria we need to meet for this to be a homeomorphism is that 
F should be a one-to-one -one correspondence between these sets. So it should be a bijection from E to T. It should be a one-to-one -one mapping from E onto T. And F should be continuous. And F's inverse should also be continuous according to these criteria. And homeomorphic sets or spaces are very, very important in topology. In fact, um, you could define a topological property as a property which is invariant under uh, homeomorphisms. For example, um, the so-called genus of a surface. Okay, so if we have... Okay, so if we have some kind of two-dimensional manifold like this surface here, uh, its genus is essentially the number of holes it has. Um, and you can deform this object by continuous deformations, um, which can be reversed, and basically sort of stretching and bending and things like that. And those basically correspond to homeomorphisms. Um, but they have the property of preserving the genus of the surface. Um, hence, I could transform this donut into a coffee cup. And uh, as a homeomorphism, a continuous deformation. But I couldn't alter the fact that there's a handle or that there's a hole. Because that's a topological property. So a topological property could be defined as something which is invariant under homeomorphisms. And topology could be considered to be, in a sense, the study of these topological properties, or classification of them, or the study of when two spaces are homeomorphic. Um, so I, I claim that the genus of a surface uh, is a topological property. So, for example, if I do a, a transformation to this, which is not a homeomorphism, because it involves sticking would be distant points together and do a bit of messing around see now I have what's sometimes called a two hole torus there's no homeomorphism that transforms that back into the shape that I was previously talking about because genus the number of holes is a topological property um, so so there's a couple of topological properties we're probably going to be discussing soon, which include ideas of connected sets and sets which are dense in themselves.